in the United States were responding to a question on the issue of the Kavar Yatra. A Pakistani journalist was shuttered by uh, the U.S. State Secretary where uh, after uh, the question was raised on the directives in the two BJP ruled state, the U.S. State Department on Wednesday said that it has engaged with Indian counterparts on the importance of equal treatment for all the members of all the religion. Now, a Pakistani journalist raked up the issue during a press briefing, alleging that the BJP government was forcing Muslim owners of restaurants to display their Muslim names at the eateries. He said, responding to these questions, that we have seen those reports and we have seen the Supreme Court has issued an interim st uh, stay on the implementation of these rules. He also emphasized that the US has engaged with its Indian counterparts on the importance of equal treatment for all the members of all the religions in the country. Well, joining me at this point is our correspondent Brian Thomas. Now, Brian, uh, this controversy of Kavar Yatra, which is already uh, re uh, re uh, actually beefing in the country, has reached US, where a Pakistani journalist has asked the question and raised concerns on unequal treatment given to the people of different religions. What are we picking up uh, from our sources in the MEA and also as per the statements officially given by the U.S. State Department? Simran, you know, at this very press conference, uh, this very Pakistani journalist questioned U.S. State's, um, State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller about the very controversial directives uh, issued by uh, two BJP ruled states uh, requiring eateries along the Kavar Yatra route to display their owners' names. Now, yes, in response, uh, you know, Miller stated that the Supreme Court of India has imposed an interim stay on these uh, directives, so they are not actually in effect. Now, the pa Pakistani journal further also alleged that these directives force Muslim restaurant owners to display their Muslim names at their eateries. And uh, post that, um, you know, he, uh, Matthew Miller responded to the very question and he said that they have seen those reports and they have also seen reports that the Indian Supreme Court on July 22nd issued an interim stay on the implementation of those rules. So they are actually not in effect. And he also added that speaking generally they are uh, committed to promoting and protecting universal respect uh, for the right of freedom of religion and belief for all anywhere in the world yes Imran. well thank you brian with all these details now joining me at this point is our editorial director director madhav nalapat uh, mr mr nalapat the issue has now also reached the u.s state department where a strong statement is coming uh, from the State Department uh, Secretary as well, who has said that they have taken the cognizance of all these uh, uh, reports and directives that have been issued by the Apex Court. What uh, do you make of this statement which has just come after the issue was raked by a Pakistani journalist in the press conference? And of course, importantly to be viewed as relations between the India and US on the religious sentiments and all these issues uh, is concerned so far. Well, uh, I'd like to point out first that uh, Pakistan, uh, through Pakistani journalists, I mean, they basically function in accordance with the military directives. And uh, they are out to uh, create an impression that, that India is discriminating against the Muslim community uh, to draw, deflect attention away from their own terrible discrimination against Christians and Hindus, so such that now... Christians and Hindus are almost uh, um, uh, uh, non-existent minorities in Pakistan. So this effort has been ongoing to paint India and especially the government led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi as anti-Muslim by Pakistan. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this is a completely false narrative, but it has gained some currency there. I think it's important to point out, and I think that should be highlighted, that this measure, exact same measure, was first introduced by Mulayam Singh uh, in 2006, when he was Chief Minister of UP, and Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister, uh, was the Prime Minister of UP. Mulayam Singh was Chief Minister, Manmohan Singh was Prime Minister, and uh, then uh, the same measure was introduced. In my personal view, yeah, yeah, in my personal view, of course, the name thing ought to, could have been avoided. But the second thing is, the State Department official made a very routine, anodyne statement about respecting, which is the same statement that any 
a democratic government would make, including that of India. And uh, so I, in my view, it has deflected the attention. I mean, it has deflected the attention uh, uh, from the barb of the Pakistan journalist and pointed out to the fact that India has a very strong checks and balances of a democratic system and that this particular law is not enforced. I think that is a very valid point that was made. So overall, no, I don't think this is going to have much of an impact. Although I have said in the past, and I say it now, that democratic administrations generally keep giving you know, this kind of lip service to what, what are considered barbs <clears throat> against India, whereas the Republicans, especially Trump and, and Vance, are much less likely to do so. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Nalapat. Now, uh, with all these perspective on these details, let us also now move on to an important story that we are tracking at this point. In effect now. Sir, Indian media is reporting that in few states, the BJP government is forcing Muslims owners of restaurants to, uh, to display their Muslim names at their eateries. But due to growing hate against Muslims, they fear it will bring more problems for them. What are your thoughts when you see such kind of actions by any government? Uh, so we have seen those, those reports. We have also seen the reports that the Indian Supreme Court on July 22nd in, issued an interim stay on the implementation of those rules. So they're not actually in effect now. Um, at, speaking generally, we are, uh, as we always say, committed to promoting and prom uh, respecting universal, uh, promoting and protecting, I should say, universal respect for the right of freedom of religion and belief for all anywhere in the world. And we have engaged uh, with our Indian counterparts on the importance of equal treatment for members of all religious communities. The U.S. Commission on Religious Freedom once again urged Biden administration to list India as a country of concern. Uh, this request has been ongoing for the past three years. Uh, according to several U.S. commissioners, uh, their visas have been denied uh, by Indian High Commission in D.C., uh, they wanted to go there to monitor the ground realities on religious freedom. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, so I'm not going to speak to a specific visa um, decision. I'm not aware of the facts of, it, of those specific things. But when it comes to uh, religious freedom designations, that is a process that we take seriously. And we announce the conclusions every year in our annual report. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.